Hello children, good morning. Welcome to the 9th standard first language English class. In today's class, we will be learning the 8th poem, The Ethics. Children, you would have heard many stories, right? In today's class, we shall read a story. Read the story with me, children. In the remote past, curd sellers used to carry curds in small pots. On one such occasion, while a curd seller was carrying a pot filled with basket on her head, an eagle was flying over her head with its prey, a cobra. The angry and frightened cobra was trying to free itself from the clutches of the eagle. It was striking the eagle with its hood. In the process, the snake's venom fell into the pot of curds. A little boy who ate that curds died. A trial was conducted and the curd seller was summoned to the king's court. The curd seller passed on the buck to the snake and the snake in turn on to the eagle. The eagle pleaded its innocence and said, that it was natural for an eagle to prey upon snakes. Now, who should take the moral responsibility for the death of the boy? Now, what would you do, children? I want you to think. Now, there are many such questions which we will come across in life. In today's poem, we will come across our author speaking about such decision making for an ethical situation. Now, before we go to the poem, let us learn something about our author. The author of this poem is Linda Pastan. She is an American poet born in Bronx, New York. She was born on May 27th, 1932. She attended the Radcliffe College. She got her master's degree in arts from the Brandeis University. And the many awards that she has got in her bag are Pushcart Prize, the Dylan Thomas Award, and the very famous Bess Hawkin Award, to name just a few of them. Now, she resides currently in a place called Potomac in Maryland. Now, she has also been serving as the Poet Laureate of Maryland. A few of her important works include A Perfect Circle of Sun, which she wrote in 1971, Aspects of Eve, written in 1975, the Five Stages of Grief, written in 1978, Setting the Table, which she wrote in 1980, and Traveling Light, which is the most recent of her works, which she wrote in 2011. Now, let us learn a few new words in today's class, along with its meanings, and let us also learn how to use these words which means we will also learn the word usage. Shall we look into the new words, children? Yes. Now, let us see which is the first word coming up. The first word is ethics, which is also the title of the poem. Now, what does it mean? It means moral values of human conduct. Now, let us see how we can use this word. Every profession has its own ethics. Let us look at the next word, fall. Now, here the word is used as a noun. Now, what does it mean? It means autumn. Now, let us see its usage. Next fall, we will be back in Canada. The third word that is coming up is opt. Now, what does it mean? It means to choose. Now, how do we use it? 
after a serious thought i opted to buy a bicycle now let's look at the next word drafty the meaning is usually uncomfortable something which is not very clear and something which is not very comfortable that's the meaning sita has moved out of her drafty house the next word is eschew children pronounce it with me eschew yes what does it mean it means avoid let's see how to use this vegans eschew all animal products now let's look at the word that comes up here in the poem here is a reference to a person rembrandt so there's a reference to this word he says rembrandt painting so who is this rembrandt this rembrandt was living between 1606 and 1669 he was a very famous dutch painter and he is very famous because of his handling of the light and shade in his portraits now he has painted many self portraits now this is one of the portraits of rembrandt himself which he himself has painted so as you see here see the light and darkness how he has used the light and shadow effect in his portrait so this is the speciality of rembrandt's works so these are some of the new words that you will come across in today's lesson now let's go to the poem proper so the name of the poem is the ethics now let's move forward and give it a reading i want you to sit back and listen to the poem children try to comprehend the poem as i am reading it ready yes in ethics class so many years ago our teacher asked this question every fall if there were a fire in a museum which would you save a rembrandt painting or an old woman who hadn't many years left anyhow restless on hard chairs caring little for pictures or old age we'd opt one year for life the next for art and always half heartedly sometimes the woman borrowed my grandmother's face leaving her usual kitchen to wander some drafty half imagined museum one year feeling clever i replied why not let the woman decide herself linda the teacher would report is choose the burdens of responsibility thus fall in a real museum i stand before a real rembrandt old woman or nearly so myself the colors within this frame are darker than autumn darker even than winter the browns of earth the earth's most radiant elements burn through the canvas i know now that woman and painting and season are almost one and all beyond saving by children now let's try to analyze these lines children i hope you have understood at least a part of it when i was doing the reading now when we analyze it we will try to understand what the poet is actually trying to convey to us here now let's look at this first primary question that has come up in this poem what is the question there is an ethical question which has been asked by the teacher to the students probably the children are in a school and that is when the teacher has asked this question now let's see what is the question what said if there were a fire in a museum what would you save the teacher here is also giving an option the teacher is saying you have to save between two things what are the two things an old woman who would not live long she is going to die very soon so are you going to save one such woman or 
are you going to save a very old painting that has been preserved for centuries now the children what do you think would be their answer now in the poem the poet continues to say that the children probably at that small age were unaware of you know how to take a decision on this so they were very uncomfortable with this sort of a question sometimes they would say yes 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 we want the old woman i will save the old woman and some others would say i will save an old painting but usually as small children they would prefer to save the old woman the reason being in the old woman they would see the face of their own grandmother so they would have an attachment to, with their grandmother and therefore they would prefer to save the old woman rather than saving the old painting because they do not know the value of an old painting so now what is the poet trying to give us here the poet is trying to tell us a contrasting situation here she is trying to bring in a situation which is unreal imaginary one with that of a situation wherein she really is in front of a rembrandt painting now what does she say she brings in certain aspects of the unreal in the poem let's find out what are those things now if there were fire in a museum the word if suggests that it is not real it is an unreal it is an imaginary situation now there is another line where she says the woman borrowed my grandmother's face now this is not real it is not the children's uh, grandparents who are there in the museum who are really in a situation where the disaster has to be managed but here again the word the woman borrowed my grandmother's face says that it is a unreal situation or an imaginary situation now the next one leaving her usual kitchen to wander now is it possible will anybody simply leave away the kitchen and walk away to a museum no that is also unreal but here the poet in the initial lines is imagining herself to be a young girl or a young child and that is when she has probably felt like this and that is what she is expressing here now some drafty half imagined museum so probably many children wouldn't have even seen a museum with lot of paintings in it so here the poet is trying to bring in the concept of half imagined museum so they don't even know how a museum will be and what is being actually preserved there so these are certain lines these are certain expressions that come in the poem which tells us that the poet is trying to bring in certain unreal situations before us now what are the real situations that she is trying to bring forth let's look into it now she says real rembrandt old woman's portrait she is actually standing in front of an rembrandt old woman's portrait now when she is looking into the portrait she is actually able to make out the value of the portrait herself now there is another line which says nearly so myself so she compares she says there is an old woman here and nearly so myself so she is referring to herself who is also old now and that is another real aspect which she brings in here now she also talks of initially she in the first uh, unreal situation she says if there were fire in a museum and she also say brings in the concept of a half imagined museum but here in the latter part of the poem she brings in the concept of a real museum in which she is actually standing and seeing the beauty of the portraits of rembrandt now she also brings in another concept a shift in concepts now what does linda here try to project she tries to bring in the concept of past and present she brings in a shift from the past to the present 
So, let us observe what she does and how she does it. Now, she talks of an ethical question which has been asked. Now, when was this asked? It was asked to her in the past, probably when she was in her school. But she has this question in her mind even till the present. Does it mean that she has not found an answer to it? Does it mean that she has found an answer? Yes, let us see what exactly she wants to say. She intends to say that each time the same question emerges, it comes up. Probably her answers have been different and now she is actually finding the real answer to this question which was asked some long time back in her past. Now, she also brings another concept. What is that? She suggests very clearly in her poem, if you read through the lines, you can make out that she shifts the concept of an immature past or an immature childhood. She compares this with the mature present or the mature old age. Now, children, this is where I would like to tell you that it is very important whenever we come across a ethical problem like this where we have to take a serious decision we always see that you know our answer to such questions will go on varying with situation it will vary with the maturity mental maturity now there are certain ethical questions to which yes there is a constant answer to it for example child labor now, child labor, even if you ask a small child, it will tell you, yes, it is wrong. So, even if you ask a grown up person, they say it is wrong. So, such ones are questions which cannot be changing. But there are other certain questions where decisions can alter because of the mental maturity of a person. Now, let us see what are the various poetic devices that are poet has used here. She has used a free verse, she has used repetition, she has also used imagery and very subtly she has brought in a metaphorical comparison in the poem. So, let us look into all these. Now, first let us look into the first poetic device that she has brought in here, free verse. Now, what do you mean by free verse? It means that there are basically no rhyming words, there is no set pattern in the poem. She has shown that there can be a transition in the initial lines. She has used the prosaic syntax which means the lines run as if they are written in a prose and not in a poem. So, the beginning has a prosaic syntax. For example, look at this. In ethics class, so many years ago, our teacher asked the question. So, this in the beginning, the first few lines seem as if the poet is actually talking of a prose and not a poem. But as the poem runs down, the later part of the poem, the style also changes. The ending part almost seems like as if it has taken a poetic syntax towards the end, where she says, the woman and painting and the season are all now almost one. So, this is how she tries to bring in the poetic aspect on the rhythm in the poem. She shows the transition from the prosaic syntax to the poetic syntax also. Now, let us look at the next device here. The poet has used lot of words which are repeated in the poem. Now, let us look at some of these old woman, painting, real, darker, fall. The poet has used the words old woman many times. Here, an old woman who had not many years left, that is one instance where she has used it. And again, she speaks of the old woman now standing before the painting. So, here she goes on repeating to show the transition. Now, she also talks of the painting. Now, how does she talk of the painting here? She initially, initial line she talks of a Rembrandt painting 
and again in the latter part of the poem she speaks of the Rembrandt painting before which she is actually standing. So, here again she repeats. So, these repeat kind of repetition again she brings in the concept of a real museum, real Rembrandt painting suggesting that she is moving from unreal to real. She uses the words darker, darker than autumn, darker even than winter again trying to emphasize that she is now able to get the clarity of thought. She is able to see clearly what is the beauty or the what is the value of the painting. Now, she uses this word fall. Now, initially she would say every fall, the same question would be asked by the teacher every fall. She uses the word every fall, which means every autumn repeatedly the uh, ethics teacher would ask this. But when does she get the answer? She gets the answer. The day she gets the answer, she says this fall. So, she again brings in the contrast here. Every fall suggests that probably, you know, it was not really interesting till then. But when she insists on, when she says this fall, she has actually shown interest to actually find an answer to the question that has been probably lingering in her mind that was given by her ethics teacher. Now, let us look at another poetic device children that is imagery. Now, these imagery let us simply understand them as they are word pictures or words which bring in some kind of an images to our mind. Now, let us see what are the few imagery that she has used fire in a museum. The, the minute we say fire in a museum, obviously we get a picture in our mind where a museum has caught fire. Let us see what are the other things. She says hard chairs. Now, she has brought in this concept of hard chair to show that the children are probably very uncomfortable. If you are seated on a sofa, if you are seated on a cushiony seat, you feel comfortable, right. But here she brings in the word hard chairs simply to say that the children are very uncomfortable sitting and listening to such repeated questions in the class. Now, what is the next one? Grandmother's face. The minute she says grandmother's face, all of us recall our own grandmothers. So, that is why she has brought in a concept which all of us can identify with. Now, she has also brought in some of the colors of the painting. When she says these colors, we imagine these colors probably on a portrait, maybe of an old woman, it can even be the uh, any old woman that we have seen. Now, darker than autumn, probably it was very dark in shade. And then darker even than winter, she is using such colors to bring in the concept of the color of the painting to our mind. She also says browns of earth. So, we will be able to actually relate these words with the paintings probably even if we have not seen these paintings really. Now, let us try to quickly summarize the poem. Now, Linda the poet here recalls a very complex question of morality which has been asked by her teacher in her school days. Now, the teacher wants her students to attempt at ethical decision making questions. In her childhood, it seemed very uninteresting for the poet. What seemed very uninteresting? The complex question, whom would you save? So, this seemed to be very, very uninteresting to the children. And during her youth, she seemed to be eschewing the question. And after gaining life's experience as she grows older, the question seems to be getting an answer. The question seemed to get an answer. Now, what was it? The poet realizes that a woman, a painting and a season are all one and saving them is beyond the scope of small children. The poet also brings out the transition in the ability to understand the concept of ethics through life's experiences. So, she subtly brings in the change. 
she does not bring the change all of a sudden but very subtly when you read the poem and reread the poem you can actually make out that the poet very slowly she brings in the kind of a transition in the life of the poet herself finally she brings in the theme or the theme of understanding the meaning of ethics becomes very very clear with the maturity of the person and the experience of the person she brings out the theme very beautifully through the poem bringing in lot of contrast using imagery and using subtle situations which she runs through in the poem now let's quickly check our comprehension children i hope you have understood this poem so let's check it now let's look at the first question what does it say what question did the teacher ask every time can you give me the answer now yes the teacher asked if they would save an old painting or an old woman who had not many years to live if a museum was on fire now it was an unreal ethical situation which needed serious decision making now let's look into the next question where is the speaker while narrating this incident yes can you tell me where she was the speaker is in a museum while narrating the incident what had the speaker realized after several years now the speaker finds similarities in the painting by rembrandt the season or the fall and the old woman it was only experience that helped her know the value of human life value of art and the value of the fall or the changing season what lesson does the poet want to teach us about ethics here so what is the crux of this poem linda pastan drives home the fact that ethics is not about what you choose but about why you would make that choice so children it is very important here according to the poet the lesson that we have to know is not what you choose but it is the reason behind choosing it or why we choose that particular answer as a solution for that particular question the expressions that show that the question did not interest the children are now there are a few expressions in the poem which tells us that the children are not interested so where do you think this comes yes in the initial part of the poem so what are these expressions let us look into them restless on hard chairs caring little for pictures or old age and the expression always half heartedly now now let's look at another question here the children were restless on hard chairs because they were eager to answer the question they were unable to understand the ethical dilemma the hardness of the chair affected their calmness now what do you think is the right answer children they were unable to understand the ethical dilemma and therefore they felt very restless in their chairs look into the home assignments that you have to do now what you have to do is you have to list out a few ethics that you have to follow in certain situations now what are those situations quickly note it down children place of work so what ethics will you follow in a place of work in a place of living that is in your house a place of worship and place of learning it can be your school so what kind of ethics should we follow in these places now let's try to wind up today's session with this beautiful quote as you get older your views about life change your perception this is a beautiful quote which has been given by ruskin bond children thank you for giving a patient hearing i would like to give my credits to mr enuka fadnas for having given me some illustrations for this class thank you children thanks a lot bye take care